I may have been wrong about dry pouring in layers. This could actually mean that it's a viable technique for these piers. Hey, welcome back. So here we have a couple of the pieces from our last dry pour project. Folks have been saying that we should have let it soak a little bit longer, put more water. So now it's been about three weeks and it's been setting out in the rain. These guys still have that stratification, but they seem a little bit harder. They're not just peeling off, but there are those layers of the concrete from when we first set it. Initially, just hitting it with a hammer, it feels completely different. So yeah, it's been about three weeks and it's made such a big difference. One piece. And look at that right there. So it's dried all the way up to about there, and then there's still moisture in there. Now, if you remember from that last video, it was super crumbly. As soon as I started to go like this, pieces of it would completely fly off. That's not the case for this right now. It's holding together pretty well, actually. I don't have a cold chisel with me, so I can't actually chisel it, but this is completely different. That's much stronger. It's holding together even better. You know, I may have been wrong about dry pouring in layers. This could actually mean that it's a viable technique for these piers. So one thing to notice are the air gaps. You can see from that piece right there that they're pretty small, but there's little pockets and they're just throughout the whole structure. That's not something you get when you mix concrete. Well, it's not uniform. It's not the same throughout. Whereas when you mix concrete, it's not gonna have those air pockets throughout any part of it. So this one right here on the left is concrete that was dry poured in layers, and then we added water. That's from our last project. This is the first project that we did, which was a variation of dry pouring, but there was some mixing involved with a piece of rebar. Look at the difference. There are no air pockets here. There's some small cracks right here, but there are not these giant air pockets that I see over here. This is like a, a giant vein that's never gonna get filled. This, however, with that little bit of mixing, made a huge difference. See this guy, you can see that there's this, uh, this rocky texture, whereas this one, all the stones are pretty well mixed in. There's not this localized pocket of, of grain over here. This one is homogenous, whereas this one is striated and that's not gonna change with time, with more water. If you're gonna do dry pour, you need to incorporate at least a little bit of mixing if you're hoping to get that homogenized structure throughout it. I got it, that's probably not what people wanna hear. Just look at the difference. Air pockets, no air pockets. So it seems like you guys were right. I do need to wait longer on these projects. It's still not perfectly mixed. So I've been trying to test the limits of dry pour concrete simply because I don't trust it. Some folks have had very good experiences with it, others have not. The problem that I have with dry pour concrete is that it doesn't really save you anything because of the fact that you have to come back and water it for hours on end. I really wanted this to work because I, I have some projects in mind. If you guys have some ideas on how we can test dry pour concrete some more, make sure to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.